Okay. So, um, do we have um, Councillor Lane present? Present, yes. Councillor Jim Gifford, Vice Chair. Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Councillor Bolton. I can't. Councillor Bolton, are you? Uh, Councillor Bolton's not in the meeting by the looks of the press. Councillor Wamsden. Yes, I'm present. Councillor Agayo. Yes, I'm here. Councillor Petrie. Yes, I'm here. Professor Stephen Logan. Is your microphone? Yes, I can see you. And is your microphone? I think your microphone's off. I'm here. Councillor Patrick Macri. I'm here. Yes, present. And Sarine Wood. I'm glad you're not calling me councillor, but I am here. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, Mr. Macri. Don't worry. OK, I'll now okay. hand back to Councillor Lane. Thank you very much, Mr. Masson. It's uh, um, good to welcome everybody this morning and um, thank you for uh, coming. I, I realise that we've rearranged the meeting. We've brought it forward by a couple of weeks. I so appreciate everybody's attendance today. Um, if we maybe come on to the agenda items, uh, we have no urgent business today, but we do have one item of exempt business, which is item eight, um, a, a verbal update on the biohub. Can we agree to take that as exempt business? Agreed. 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 Thank you. Um, oh, and welcome, Councillor Bolton. Hi. <laughs> maybe you had some difficulty getting into yeah. it. I had to go onto my iPad. <laughs> Okay, no worries. Um, okay, the declarations of interest. Do we have any declarations of interest? Yes, Councillor Algayo. Yeah, microphone. I think you're on mute at the moment. He's having difficulty with his mute button, I think, maybe. They're still on mute. I know. That's it. Yeah. That's it now, Councillor Gare. Oh. I think there appears to be a bit of difficulty, perhaps. Oh, Councillor Gare, you're still on mute. Councillor Gale, would would you like to um, send a note in the chat box? Can you can you actually hear us? No. Okay, I'm not quite sure. If Councillor Gail can email me his um, his uh, uh, declaration, then I can I can include that in the minute. Okay, and you could perhaps articulate what that is. Okay. Right. Any other declarations of interest from any other members? Yes, Councillor Lumsden. Yeah, thank you. I'd just like to declare an interest as um, the Aberdeen City Council's um, nominated uh, board member on NHS Grampian. Um, and obviously we'll be discussing the, the bio hub today. Um, and, but I, I don't believe that that interest uh, should um, means I should leave the meeting. Thank you. OK, thank you for that. Um, I think, um, Councillor Lane, we're in the same position for the bio hub from Opportunity Northeast. Um, clearly one is an interested party. <clears throat> OK, so you're de declaring an interest, but don't feel you need to, to leave. I don't feel I need to leave the meeting, no. OK, that's fine. Thank you. Um, yes. Sorry, Professor Logan, I think you're on mute. Do you want to come in and declare an interest? In exactly the same thing on the, the bio uh, OK. board. OK, thank you for that. And I, I suppose I should declare an interest as a member of the one board as well. Yeah. OK, Mr McCray's interest as well. And I've still got Councillor Argyle's hand up, but he's disappeared yeah. off the screen. So. Have I? Oh, hang on. Are you able? Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, sorry about that. I, I was pressing the button and pressing it and it wouldn't turn on, so I, I had to go out and come back in again. Okay. It seems to be working so far. Sorry about that. Um, okay. Yes, in relation in relation to item seven, I'm a board member and indeed vice chair of Nestrand. So just for that to be noted, it doesn't impact on my participation in the item. 
Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Right, Mr. Masson, I think you'll have got everybody's uh, declarations there. I'm not seeing any other hands. Yes, thank you. If Councillor Argyll can just put his hand down now. Yeah. Councillor Argyll, if you could just remove your hand. That's it. Thank you very much. Right, item four is the minute of the previous meeting, which was held on the 24th of July. Um, it's here for approval. Are we happy to approve the minute? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. That takes us to item five, which is the grant offer letters report, and there are a number of appendices um, connected with that, A, B, C, and D. So um, I open that up for questions. Do you have any questions on the main report, first of all? Yes, Councillor Gifford. Yeah, thanks, Chair. It's really just for clarification on the the, the the money under city under OGTC the, the additional two million pounds that has has appeared there just to get clarification that is money that's been transferred forward from their, their own allocations of future funding rather than any additional money that's come in from any other source okay thank you for that and um, mr are you best place to or is it it hey, chair good morning yes indeed just to confirm what councillor gifford has said Yes, there, there was a, a reprofiling of the money for um, OGTC. Two million pounds was accelerated forward, and the remaining future years have been reprofiled to reflect that two million pounds. So overall, the total funding is the same. Chair. Okay, thank you for that. Any other questions? I think the, um, is there anything on the appendices? That people want to ask. I obviously asked about questions on the main report. Is there anything in the parentheses that have before us? Yes, Councillor Gifford. Yes, thanks again, Chair. Yes, it's really in terms of the figures and all the data that's there, there's obviously a lot of it, all very useful, very interesting stuff. But one thing that from my point of view it looks a bit lacking is is the is the added benefit bit from all this funding that's been allocated and is now being spent and we, we see the you know things at OGT, the OGTC the projects coming through that are moving on to uh, commercialization and what have you which is all excellent stuff but we, we don't see the bit which is really what the situation deal was set up to do which was to see the the added benefit to the exchequer in terms of you know income tax being paid VAT being collected etc etc now I'm assuming that's partly if not wholly going to be wrapped up in the OGTC annual report which is um, due shortly I believe just wonder if we can get clarification that, that detail is likely to be in there yeah we'll get we'll get that I think I think you're right I believe that the OGTC are to discuss future milestones at the checkpoint review um, with UK and Scottish government um, we're expecting that I think in the next couple of months and um, it's been delayed due to the COVID-19 situation those meetings have um, obviously been postponed but I'll maybe bring in um, Mr Sweetenham are you able to clarify that? Yes so so the um, exactly that um, Councillor Lang that the um, we, we'd be picking up the benefits realisation at, at all the checkpoint reviews bearing in mind that some of the outcome uh, measures, of course, when we were doing the uh, appraisal at the uh, sort of three years ago, some of the outcome measures do take longer to materialise. But but yes, that is a, a key part of the city region deal programme is that benefits realisation piece. Thanks. Do you want to come back, Councillor Gifford? No, that's absolutely fine. If it's all work in progress, and we're going to see it coming through in the in the next annual report, which you know, as we all know, has has been delayed for obvious reasons, then that that will be good. Any other questions? Not seeing anybody raising any hands. Um, we're obviously we're being asked to um, approve the implementation plan, the benefits realisation plan, and the financial forecast tables. I'd be happy that. Not seeing any dissension. So we have to get yes, we're happy. With that. Yep. Okay, thank Great. you. Right, that takes us on to item six, which is the digital gap analysis progress report. Um, do we have any questions on this? Mm -hmm. <coughs> 
Yes, Mr. McCoy, I see you. <clears throat> yeah, just uh, just an observation rather than a question. Uh, you know, we're obviously still lagging considerably behind in Aberdeenshire at three percent. You know, it's a, a disturbing number to actually see that as being the the digital offering in Aberdeenshire uh, at this point in time. So it'd be good to see how we can address that in some significant way. Okay. Yeah, I think um, you won't be alone in that. Um, I'll maybe take in Councillor Gifford, and then I'll I'll bring in officers and um, to come back on that. Yeah, yeah, just to echo that, I mean, the, the whole COVID situation has really magnified the digital divide between areas like bits of the city that are got phenomenal speed now and other areas that are hanging by a third if they've got anything at all. And the, the R100 programme was going to be the next thing that was going to solve all the problems. That's obviously stuck in the mire. And I think if that sees the light of day in the next four or five years, we'll be lucky. So it's really a question of what other discussions we could be having behind the scenes to try and improve the situation across large areas of especially Aberdeenshire, but the, the whole northeast in, in, in the round, um, while waiting for R100 to come out of the courts. Okay, Councillor Gifford. Um, I think, is it Miss Robertson that we've got that can maybe give us a wee bit of background in detail about how we're moving forward, particularly in relation to Aberdeenshire? Yes, Miss Robertson, I think I've got you on the screen. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, we have undertaken a detailed gap analysis of the infrastructure within the city and shire and came up with a number of high level options to address these um, we have to wait until after two, after september um, the r100 court hearing um, takes place in september and also um, aberdeenshire council have a meeting with um, bt um, to sorry open each to discuss um, their announcement of what offering they're going to have in aberdeenshire and um, once these meetings have been taken place, we can then address the high level options um, and approach the full business case of how this is going to be um, addressed. OK, thank you. On that time scale, then, Ms. Robertson, you're, you're confident that you would be able to come back with the outline business case um, in the November joint committee, given the timelines for the court case and, and other aspects? Yes. Any other questions on, on this paper? No. OK, again, we're being asked to, to note the progress update and, um, as I mentioned there, request that the outline business case comes back to the Joint Committee in November. Are we happy to agree that? Great. Yeah, yeah agreed. Yeah, OK, that, that takes us on now to item seven, which is the strategic transport appraisal update. Now, I think we have Mr Finch with us, so maybe... Okay. Yes, Mr. Finch. Did you want to um did you want to give us some context around the paper before I open up for questions? Yep. Um very briefly, this is the next stage of the work on the strategic transport appraisal. The strategic transport appraisal, as defined in the city region deal agreement, was basically to look at what the future plans for the region should be and to then to set up the business cases and any early design work which can enables sort of oven ready schemes to take forward post the city region deal when, when funding was made available by the likes of uh, Transport Scotland. That work has reached a significant point in that we're now uh, come to a set of proposals. Those proposals have been combined with the work within the regional transport strategy, which is now out for consultation. And we are now anticipating well that that consultation ends in October. Thereafter, we've got the consultation together. We will then be presenting an outline business case back to City Region Deal for the next five years, outlining those business cases that we want to be taking forward, uh, ready for implementation uh, go, going forward. So that's where we are in in in, in the process. And yeah, happy to take any questions on that very brief overview I've just given them. Thank you, uh, Mr. Finch. And you're obviously keen to get that feedback into the consultation pro process as well from, from partners. But maybe if I open up, see if we've got any questions today or comments even um, that, that we can take. Yes, so the end. I've got your hand. So we've got seven projects on page two of the, uh, of the summary note. Um, I guess the question is, um, What's the prioritisation within the seven projects? 
I mean, for, for example, um, the uh, link to Aberdeen South Harbour, um, Wellington Road, that whole area is absolutely key. And, 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 you know, the timing of that is going to, have to be in the next two, three, four years. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't know who sits down and decides what the priority is going to be in these projects. Okay. There will be a, 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 a programme worked out in terms of those different schemes. The, uh, each of those different seven schemes are not starting on the same start line. Often these seven schemes have got some work and some progression being undertaken before them. Uh, so it is a case of how can we best position these schemes in that investment pipeline going forward so that we are we optimize that investment for the whole of the whole of the region for example um active travel linking to and with, within the city center that is very important work is ongoing on that at the moment can the city region deal use its funding to accelerate some of the key projects on there the, the railway stations on the existing lines we recognize that that implementation path happens over a longer period of time just because there are so many players involved and so many uh, in interconnections. You're right in when you highlight the importance of Wellington Road and the, the links to the South Harbour and, and that is being progressed as quickly as we can at the moment and we hope to be able to do some consultation on that in, in and around October. The trunk road improvement, Ellen to Toll of Burness, again that is identified as very important regionally albeit we have to work with Transport Scotland because it is their road, not our road, in terms of how we can boost that along the line. So that has a slightly different delivery path line um, as well. Uh, West Hill Corridor, again, that is something that is a future problem and that can be done pretty much at the same time because it's not dependent on some of the other projects that are going on. So there are priorities within there, although the important thing is how we align the work stages on each of those seven projects to, to, to push them on as quickly as we can. I wouldn't say we want to say we're going to finalise one and then do the other. I guess it's the question is how can we progress all seven of those as quickly as possible with the resources that we have available? Does that help? Yeah. So do you actually have a an outline plan right now which shows each of these projects and against a time scale and what is likely to be or have you, have you got that ready? There is a plan, there is a program that we have in draft and we would be wanting to include that when we bring the outline business case to hopefully the next committee. Let's just hope that the consultation that we have on this doesn't throw up any particularly strange things that would mean that we have to reorganise or, or, or rethink something. And, and that will provide that program for the next five years of how we would set out the work on the business cases and in some cases outline design work and in some cases how do we push through to implementation within those five within the next five years. Okay. I'm looking forward to seeing the plan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think y your point of the, the time scales is the critical thing. And, um, you know, they, they can be working in tandem and various things, but we need to look at the time scales for each of the prioritised projects to make sure that they're um, meeting the needs of, of other, uh, the completion of other projects and things like that as well. So, yeah, I think Mr Finch is aware of that. Hopefully we'll see, we'll see some of that detail. Can I bring in um, Councillor Gifford? Yeah, so similar question on time scales, really, in particular the A90, Round about Ellen and up to Peter Red and Fraserburgh. I mean, those appraisals, my memory fails me, must be about three years now since they were done. And the question is if this now takes another many years to go through all the processes that Paul's just been talking about, do we have to at some stage go back and redo all those appraisals, respend the money we've already spent, and start the whole thing from scratch? Because that could be a, a perpetual circle that never reaches a conclusion. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Mr. Finch? I would the, the work that we have done is robust and sound and, 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 and is valid to make the argument going forward. Clearly, the work that the local authorities have done is the prompt for Transport Scotland to then start on their processes in terms of the, uh, the, the, the trunk road design process because it's a trunk road. I would say that we are in a good position to keep keep on making the case, although it is not the job of the local authority to, and it is not 
advantageous for the local authority to start doing the work which the trunk the trunk road authority should be doing on their road go going forward so we continue to make the arguments we continue to 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 muster the best evidence that we have available and we continue to 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 press the case and that is where we are at with, 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 with Toll of Burness, and we will continue to do that using the modelling uh, uh, evidence that we have, uh, the outcome of various attitude surveys that we're undertaking within the context of Ness Trans at the moment, and the ongoing monitoring of, 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 of the safety and the road, in, road traffic impacts in that area, and as well working with the likes of Fraserburgh and Peterhead Harbour Port Authorities and, and, and the fishing industry to, to, to keep on making the case in that area. Councillor Gifford, do you want to come back on that? Yeah, it was really on that last point was was the, the, was about the fishing industry. But obviously, the, when the transport appraisals were done. It was pre AWPR. That's now up and running all the way to the traffic jams at Ellen, which is why we need this next bit sorted now. Um, it's then obviously taking a huge downturn uh, over the last four or five months, but it's picking back up to certainly from my observation of it to pretty well normal levels uh, on those roads. But it's the what comes on the back of the Brexit end of year stuff where the fishing industry is anticipating substantial changes and almost certainly larger numbers of uh, processing lorries or, or fresh fish lorries heading south. Um, so it's 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 how we're, we can anticipate what that future demand might be and make sure that we react fast enough so that we don't end up with huge tailbacks of, of, of lorries um, stuck north of Ellen where before they were stuck at Balmedy. Absolutely, there's a case well made, and again, these are the, 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 the arguments that we will be presenting forward to, in, in the business cases, which we'll be presenting to the Transport Scotland about the urgent requirement for action in that particular area. Um, and indeed, it's, it's, it's a point well made. We need to continue to make that point. We need to con continue talking to the industries, and I understand that that is, that is ongoing as well. And we need to engage them within the current consultation activity so all those views are, are, are made forward and so we can continue to marshal those arguments in the context of discussions on the forthcoming strategic transport projects review which is the delivery mechanism for that uh, that, that, that upgrade sorry can i just briefly um chair make a point yeah. um the timing of brexit and the, the impact of, of of brexit in terms of increased fish hopefully it is going to be significant but it'll undoubtedly be over a fair period of time. So, I mean, I think I think um, it, there will be an opportunity um, to estimate just whether it's five years or seven years, you know, to build to, the, the build up. So, I don't think we'll get caught as badly far short of that. But but we need to um, be aware of that. Okay, that's a very helpful comment. Thank you. Um, Councillor Bolton, that you've indicated. Yeah, thanks. I've just worked out how to put my hand up on my iPad. <laughs> Um, obviously, we've just got our strategic development plan back from the Scottish Government, which in turn has activated, um, we've got our, our proposed local development plans, both in the city and the shire, which all have an implication in terms of development. Now, clearly, some of these projects are more linked to the movement of people as opposed to movement of freight. And I think we have to work out where the priority lies in terms of maybe if we want to uh, prioritise some of these projects, I think we need to be looking at our local development plans and estimating what development in terms of even housing is likely to come forward and on the timeline so that we can absolutely push ahead with, I think, things like, as Sarim mentioned, the, the around the harbour area, um, you know, and we don't know about free ports and all of that's in the mix at the moment. So I think, you know, I think we need to have in the back of our minds where um, our, our priority is going to have to lie, because I think financially, whether it's the local authority or the Scottish government or even UK government level, you know, funds are going to be perhaps restricted for a period of time with the COVID and everything else. So I think there has to be in our minds a, a, where we're going to prioritise. I think that again. I'll bring in Mr. Finch, but I think he's in. Well, well, one, yeah, one one of the early actions we did in conjunction with the strategic development plan, and that was being written, was undertake a cumulative transport assessment using uh, assisted with funding from the city region deal, and that took a view of the uh, the likely pressures on the transport network, taking into account future development patterns, and that has fed into this work. We have continued to liaise on, liaise with the strategic development plan. Okay, it's, it's winding down now, but also the local development development plans in both the Shire and the city to make sure that the, the work that we're doing uh, 
is aligned and is taking account of those future development pressures. And then you talk about the uh, the issues around the harbour and the ETZ. Sure, the Lauriston growth area also needs to be factored into that area. And that is being taken into account when we're looking at the different options. So as best we can in what is now a very uncertain pattern about certain things, what, what, what changes are structural, what changes are just fleeting and might resume. We, we're doing the best we can to pick all those up with the evidence that we have available. And I'm quite confident that when we present um, back to this board, uh, the outline business case for the next five years, we'll be able to sort of program that and also identify uh, what the delivery pathways are likely to be and, and what the dependencies might be there. Okay. Thank you for that. I'm not seeing any other hands. Does anybody have any other questions on this paper? No. It was here for information, but also to encourage um, responses to the consultation from city region deal partners. So um, if you know, if you just encourage people to do that, I think that would be helpful for Mr. Finch and others as they're moving forward with those outlined business cases. Okay, can we agree? Yeah. Great. Okay, that ends the um, public part of the meeting. We'll now move into private session to consider item eight, which is uh, the biohub. So I'll hand over to Mr. Masson, who will um, obviously uh, end the filming session, but also um, come around members of the committee just to make sure that you're in a secure environment if we're discussing exempt business. So Mr. Masson. Yeah, thanks, uh, Chair. I'll just stop the recording now.